kind operating non-stop that you're not even aware of, but your subconscious actually drives every single thing that you do. All the behaviors, all the self-destructive patterns, all the behaviors that help you win and succeed, the relational things, everything that you've known in life is in your self or your subconscious mind. So if you tell and you're constantly saying, honey, no, we can't afford that, you're just telling your mind that we don't have money. So what happens with the subconscious mind is that one is to imagine that uh, your subconscious mind is like my boots. And whatever you tell the boots is where it will direct your step. So what will happen is that all of a sudden it will start directing your activity, action, or inaction to poverty thoughts. You'll start um, forgetting to follow up with a prospect. You will start missing events, missing challenge breaks, or stopping, you know, stop doing personal growth, things, things that are, you know, you spend more time watching TV than actually reading. So you'll start doing things that are actually costing you money as opposed to enriching your behavior and making you a better person. Does this make sense, Sam? Yes. Okay. So you got to do that. So money is our breach. That's a negative myth. People with money came from money. How many of you guys believe, oh, well, they have money because they came from a better background. Or they, they're they successful because they have the best upbringing. How many of you guys have struggled, to be honest? Like, they grew up on the right side of the tracks. They, well, they're not from my city. People are different here. People have a different mentality. That family, oh, they, they're better. How many of you guys believe that? Some of the... Uh, the highest paid millionaires in America right now are what we call the nouveau riche, meaning they did not come from money. This book I want you guys to pick up is called uh, Next Door Millionaire. Millionaire Next Door. One or the other. Millionaire Next Door. Um, that will teach you so much about money and about millionaires, and it will blow your face off of what you think money should come from. And actually how true millionaires act. Because you know what's really crazy is the people that you think are millionaires usually aren't. You know, people that really look it, the people that really that are wearing like Fendi and the Gucci and the Louis Vuitton and the Escalade with the 22 inch and the big custom house on the hills, you guys mostly, you guys know that those people are in debt to their eyeballs. That the real true millionaires rarely look like that. They're not trying to overcompensate. So things are really never what they seem. That's why I'm wearing like a $29 dress from Charlie Charlie. <laughs> Another minute. <laughs> um, I don't have the right upbringing. I don't have the right personality. Oh, I'm just, I'm shy. How many of you guys have said that to yourself before? I'm too shy. How many of you guys have heard that from a process? I can't know how to tell this person. Mm-hmm. Right? But what's crazy is that in every personality, there's four major personality types, there's equal amounts of six and seven figure incomers. A ton of very quiet multi-billionaires. I know a ton of very bland, very, what we call it, very analytical, you know, very conservative multi-billionaires. They're also ones that are, you know, loud and obnoxious and fun and crazy. It doesn't matter. But some of you guys are holding on to a myth that you have to have the right personality. Again, the power of your, what's that? How many of you guys have children under the age of like eight in here? It's about half the audience. Do any of your kids, do they exhibit what you call like shyness? Like around strangers? Or you say like, oh, don't worry about her, she's just shy. Say that? Because she's like, she's hiding behind your leg or something like that? No kid is born shy. No kid is born shy. You want to test me on it? What's the first thing they do when they get pulled out of the womb? What's that first noise? Yeah. Have you ever met a shy one-year-old? No. What do they do when they're hungry? Yeah. What do they do when they're excited? Yeah. Are they shy about taking their first few steps? Are they shy about learning to crawl? Or are they curious? Do they have a desire? Do they have motivation? Is there really a shy one or two year old? No. Here's what happens. All of a sudden, at like three years old, you know, Uncle Lester comes over 
And Uncle Lester is something so it's scary looking and is, he doesn't smell very good. Horrible breath. And your daughter, who's three years old, who's not shy, is doesn't have any social ability to say like, okay. She's like, ooh. So she hides behind your leg and to be polite, you're like, oh don't worry, Lester, she's just shy. And so you start to a kid. She's just shy. She's just shy. Then a couple months later, somebody else comes over, and, and, and your daughter, she's in the closet, and she is in like the heated battle of Barbie and Ken. Like it is, and My Little Pony, it's going down, Pokemon, I don't know what else they play with nowadays. Like there's some serious like days of our lives stuff going on. <laughs> and she's in it, and you're like, honey, come see, you know, you know, Aunt Mary, she's here. And because she doesn't want to, she's so engrossed in her play. And you don't want to be impolite to Aunt Mary. So you're like, you know what? She's just shy. And you begin talking that over your kid, and all of a sudden your kid believes, oh, I'm just shy, I'm just shy. There's no shy kid. So there's no wrong personality for a millionaire, there's no wrong location. Are there millionaires in El Paso? Yes or yes? Are there, are there millionaires in Houston? Are there millionaires in New York? Are there millionaires in Norway? The location is that. You know what's so funny about location? So I get to, one of the cool perks about this is traveling. You know, I get to speak, see so many people. And uh, they'll say something like, I'll go to an event. And they'll be like, oh, no, no, you don't understand. People in El Paso, they're slow. It's <laughs> a time. It's a time. You think about it. You know, this town makes sure. And, you know, if we were just from, like, the Northeast, Everything can be so much faster, right? I mean, they're faster, they're on the ball, they're just with it, they're professional. If I was just from New York, then I'd be successful. And the people from the Northeast are like, man, people are so uptight here. If I was just from the Midwest, where people are laid back, you know that Midwest, like, hospitality and just that warmth that, of all those people from Wisconsin, and Iowa, Illinois, then, if I was from the Midwest, I'd be successful. The people from the Midwest are like, it is so cold here. Nobody wants to come out and do challenge parties. It is freezing. So they're like, you know what, if I was just from South Beach, or it's warmer, you know, Miami, if I was just from South Florida, then I'd be successful because people actually want to get out and be in their, you know, in homes. And the people, people from South Beach are like, oh my gosh, South Beach, let me tell you about South Beach people. They are always late. They are always at the beach. If I was just from Canada, then I'd be successful. It's not about your location. See, the thing about Vice is that there is enough leaders, over 900 ambassadors, that are making the full of six or seven figure income, that have come from every location, every background, every age, every denomination, Height, weight, and they become successful. So is it really about these myths? Yes or no? No. So one of the things that we have to abolish to become a millionaire and have that millionaire mindset is that we have to get rid of the excuses. Write this down. Excuse is just a well-planned lie. How many of you guys ever hear, I can't afford it? Yeah. You know when I when that to me, you know what I say? Why? <laughs> you know why? Because I see those people the next week going and getting a French manicure. Those aren't cheap, are they? No. Or I see those people who say they couldn't afford to come to the event, somehow get help to go there, and then they're in the buy store buying such buy here. <laughs> or Worse yet, they didn't make it, they didn't problem solve, and didn't go to the national success training, and they check in at Hooters or at TJ Fridays, and they're out having beer mix. Yep. People have money for the things that they want, and excuse is just a well planned lie. We're going to have to abolish your excuses today to become a millionaire. And what I want you guys to do is this will be a lot of information uh, for some is I want you to just try to get one thing. Just one. One thing that you're going to change, one thing you're going to take away. It's the biggest learning for me. When 
think he sees a speaker, he doesn't try to get everything from it. It's like trying to drink from a water hose. He just tries to get one thing. So just try to get one thing out of this. Trades of a millionaire is that they are accountable. Who are you accountable to right now? Who's the person that you're accountable to? And some of you guys are accountable because you're not public. Right? We have a phrase in our, in our company called Go Public. Say it out to me. Go public. Go public. It's all about going public because a goal isn't a goal until it's public. Once you go public with anything, now you have some sense of accountability. And so it works on our challenge, right? You're like, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in the next 90 days. And you know that like the next, because you put that on Facebook, you text all your friends, you're at this party. You know that at the grocery store the next week, you cannot have no ho-hos in your car. Because that girl from church, you know that one girl from church? You know her, right? That one girl, that one woman that if she sees you with those ho-hos, she's like, oh, yeah, oh, shiny I'm that challenge. You know that you know the woman, right? <laughs> so you gotta be accountable. So you're like, you're like, step away from the poses. <laughs> step away from the little dummies. You gotta be accountable. Uh, no excuses is huge. Uh, one of the things that I share with people that I personally mentor is that if they give me an excuse, I will not work. Now they can give me reasons, and there are sometimes very legitimate reasons. But that being said, when Tara Wilson, five star ambassador, by a millionaire, by Dallas, was my personal mentor, when I saw her lose her mom from lung cancer last year, died on, after she died no six weeks later, died fast. When I saw her lose her mom, and the very next week she was still hosting conference calls, two weeks later she was still hosting, uh, she came to the ambassador event, she was out with regionals, she didn't have any excuses. Got to be accountable. Millionaires are always proactive. Do you ever feel like you're just living a reactive life? You know what it looks like, right? Living a reactive life is uh, at the end of the day, you're like, oh my God, where did the day go? Do you ever feel like that? It just got away from me. And reactive means that you're reacting to everything as it's coming in. So you're reacting immediately when that text, I gotta answer that text right away. When the phone call, I gotta answer and return that call right away. A sad something, I gotta do that, I gotta do this. Then all the notifications, Facebook is one of the worst. It gives you, it's such a reactive mode because there's always, oh, this person comments on this, now I gotta go respond, now I gotta go tag, now I gotta, oh, I gotta do this. Being reactive. Being reactive always gets you um, also in a, a, a loss of time, meaning that you'll lose time. One of the best things that you can do, one of the best things in quality to learn every morning or the night before is to plan your day. Time block. Time management is the skill that nearly every millionaire has mastered. You got it, especially if you guys have a full-time job by show of hands. Okay, so you definitely have to master this. So if you don't schedule in time to prospect, when are you gonna get it done? Or what will happen is, you know, somebody will call, your mom will call, your aunt will call, maybe you will start crying, or, you know, all these things are occurring. Oh, we forgot, it's a new CSI episode. <laughs> then we're going to create dinner. Oh, we we'll see these projects, science projects to do tomorrow. You just become reactive. And then all of a sudden, it's 10 o'clock, and it's too late to make calls. I'll do them tomorrow. That's the reactive way of living. So you have to schedule time. You have to be proactive. This also has to do with um, anything that happens in your business. I mean, if there's ever any drama or any sort of problem, being reactive means like you're just going to blow up and you're going to be like, it's like five alarms. Like, ah, you know, danger, danger, Will Robinson. How many guys freak out when you're to be honest? I used to be like, I'll try to react. <laughs> Let's be proactive on it. Let's call the customer, see what we can do. You know, a millionaire, their, their mindset is like, you know, we can solve this. A true entrepreneur are problem solvers. They're not reactive. You gotta be proactive in everything, ask them in your business. Traits of the millionaires, they are laser focused. 
this goes into time management. The one thing that my husband will tell me all the time, he's like, when you get in the zone, it's like scary. I call it like my, my office, I call it my crush cave. You know, men, men have their man cave, I have my crush cave. And when I'm working, like, do not bother me. Like, don't come in. Because if you distract me, like, oh, just no more. Try to shut the door. So the best millionaires that ever, the ones that become millionaires, realize that they have to have time where they can put 100% focus on their business and their tasks. And this can also work for your family. How many guys are why is your loved ones? Your loved ones, your family, your kids. That's the reason why you want to build this. So you have to plan and schedule time with them. You got to be laser focused on that. You need to put the phone away. See, millionaires can time chunk their time, and so that way, even though they're not spending time with the kids at the park, they're all playing and <coughs> texting on the bench. And the kid's like, Mommy, Mommy, see what I can do. And you're like, uh-huh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Instead of being laser focused on that. And in the business, this is huge as well. When I'm going and I'm making calls, so like, for instance, you know, I do get a lot of freeway calls in, and I get people calling me for things, but when I'm and I'm dialing through my organization or following up like I am laser tired, which means I'm not on Facebook. It means I'm not taking incoming calls from my cell phone, which means I'm not like having the TV going on in the background or the radio going on in the background. You gotta set that time. Have a work environment that allows you to do this. It doesn't have to be big. A work environment at home office does not have to be big, but you gotta make it so that you can have a serene place to work and you can be focused. Just get it off the kitchen table. Get it off the dining room table. Some of you guys have small homes. I know I mean, my, my first home, and the one previous to this one, you know, 1,600 square feet, and there was not really a lot of extra room, but we actually turned one of the bedrooms, and part of it was a home office, and I closed the door and I wasn't distracted. This sounds like really stupid, simple stuff, doesn't it? But how many of you guys agree that maybe there's a few of these things that you're falling short of? Absolutely. So be laser focused, they are goal oriented. Millionaires are always going after their next goal. What is your goal right now? What is your goal? Can you clearly articulate it? Something like, my goal is to grow my business. Well, is it one new customer growth? My goal is to quit my job. Okay. Right? What does it really look like? Being goal oriented can even be small things. Part of uh, my time management and being focused and being goal oriented is I know what are my absolutely best income, like gotta do it activities I have to get done each day. Like I write them down, these happen, and I usually tackle them first because I usually hate them. First of all, I like exercise. I like exercise, but I don't. You know, I like it when I get there, but the idea of going there and the pain afterwards sucks. But write it down because I know the value of it. Do you have a goal? Do you have a 90 day challenge goal? Do you have a goal of when you want to be full time? Do you have a goal of when you want to reach ambassador? Have you put a date to it? Have you made it public? See, millionaires aren't afraid of actually going out there and putting the goal and making it everyone's aware so that they can get accountability for the back to that accountable topic. Traits of a millionaire, they think big. Millionaires always have vision. How many of you agree that our, our co-mothers have tremendous vision in this plan? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it's just incredible. Millionaires always have vision. I'll tell you this. If you have a team, and you're my salad, the team is one or more people. <laughs> so if somebody, you're a leader. And your ability even to attract people in your business, I'm talking about beyond customers. It's pretty easy to attract customers. You give them archaic chips and you're like, sign up, you'll lose weight, there's no need money back guarantee. But talk about really getting promoters and building a business is they will join people with vision and passion. People that can cast a vision for where they're going. And if you don't know where you're going, a confused mind is going to lead nobody. So one of the things when I got started, mind you, remember my story, I made two to three grand a month. So I had never had a lot of success in business, but I was hungry. I had vision, I was always looking at the future, I was passionate. So when I got started by salad, I said, 
went public and I got all my friends on a call and you know some of my team members I had just you know, signed up and some of my family members and this is quite a large call. Some of my Facebook friends <laughs> and I don't know who got over me, but I'm like, I'm doing my sales, I'm taking this to the top, and in the next ten months I want to create ten uh, twenty people to make seven figures. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, six figures. I was like, I will create twenty ambassadors in the next ten months by the end of the year. Guys, I was making two hundred guys one at the time. <laughs> but I just knew. I was like, I knew. Millionaires know in their knower. They know in their knower. And I just knew. And I actually casted that vision and I said, listen, we're going to run this play. We're going to create so much momentum. We're going to be the fastest growing team in this company. And we will take 20 people on this call or in this team to six figures. You want to know how many ambassadors we have by the end of that year? 22. <laughs> I had never done this before, but I created that vision. And you know what? It was crazy coming off that call. And it wasn't hype. It wasn't like a big, just bunch of hot air. It was, I know where I'm going. And I'm going with what I'm doing. But I'd rather you come with. And we came with a vision of what it was going to be like to be one of those What is it going to be like to travel more? What is it going to be like to go on PD Paradise together? What is it going to be like to cross the stage together? With our giant phone board checks. What do you like to help them quit their jobs and fire their boss? How many of you guys love to call in awesome? Right? You guys have called in sick before, right? You're going to call in awesome. It's like, hey boss, you can't come to work today. But, because I'm awesome, too awesome to work here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> call in awesome. I painted that vision. Here are some people that you can learn about vision from. Nelson Mandela. He had a vision. 27 years incarcerated falsely while leading his country out of a, a racial political nightmare and, you know, uh, turning the entire page of South Africa, really reducing their risk of civil war, which is where they're on the path. Um, JK. How many of you uh, believe that John F. Kennedy had vision? Again, abolishing segregation, ending this on the moon. That guy had vision, and he painted it. He was one of the first presidents that to actually go live on air on TV, and because of his ability to paint that vision, that was why he was so likable. Our mothers had vision. Abraham Lincoln had major vision. Abolishing slavery. How many of you guys agree that these were world changers, nation changers? Who are you in this room today that has vision? These are three great places to start. Mother Teresa, she had vision. Maybe that led a, a, a movement. And my salus will be a movement. Passion. Now, I think a lot of people think that passion is always enthusiasm, but enthusiasm is valuable too, because if you're enthusiastic, like imagine this, so I make my first few calls to my people, my prospects, and my, you know, one call goes like this, hey guys, I just found out about this training day challenge, and I'm going to lose 10 pounds, I'm really excited about it, <laughs> catch her on this video, thanks, or, hey, Clay, I just found out about the 90 day challenge. I'm so excited. I'm going to do it to lose 10 pounds in the next 90 days. I know you're really fit. You're going to love this job. See, are you ready to do this? Which one's more effective? The latter. And in fact, it doesn't really matter what I say. I call me like, Clay, I'm so excited you got to check out. We're going to be rich. We have W's money. And in the 90 day challenge, losing weight, getting buff. Oh my God, you're going to love it. You got to go see it. But what? Do I still think I'm crazy? But you still would be more intrigued than if I called it like, Hey, Clay. <laughs> right? So enthusiasm does get you somewhere, but passion. If you're not passionate about something, you will fail. And the reason you will fail is because you'll quit. Nobody can fire you.